Uh, but fantastic. So um, obviously, I've known Trisha for quite a while now. She's been uh, speaking at many of the community events uh, for the past several years. Uh, and uh, a lot of the 365 Saturday uh, Power Community Boot Camps. And um, yes, uh, and Trisha, I, I know you originally came from a developer background, Dynamics 365 Development, then from a DevOps. And now you're kind of covering the the, the whole kind of communication stack as well. So uh, yes, so without further ado, um, over to you, Trisha. Awesome, thanks, Raz. Okay, so um, what I want to do is Give myself an introduction, um, although Raz just gave me one, uh, but I'll I'll basically go down a little bit further. So um, I'm going to talk about um, the collaboration between Dynamics and, and Teams today. Um, of course, quite topical. Um, if you've got any questions, just put them in the chat. Um, and what I'll do is interact, um, actually try to interact with you a little bit during this presentation. Um, so my name is Trisha, Trisha Sinclair. I'm currently at D365. Um, Customer Service European Lead at Avanad, which basically means although I um, am comfortable and familiar and um, specialize in the all the business applications from sales, customer service, field service, etc., I um, focus at Avanad on customer service. So that's kind of my specialty. I blog a lot, as Raz said, about Azure DevOps, but more recently I've been blogging a lot about omni-channel and customer service. Um, so if you'd like to follow me, that's my blog and my Twitter as well, where I do like to post a lot about um, pretty much things that interest me, so namely, you know, anything tech, power platform, etc. And also my LinkedIn, if there are any questions or if you need any additional support um, that you can't find on my blog or um, you're not finding much engagement on Twitter. So just, yeah, please feel free to connect, to connect with me and I'm happy to. Um, walk you through anything that I might know or um, might guide you in the right direction. Right, so as I mentioned, um, it's really about the interaction, the collaboration between Dynamics um, and Teams. And we're going to start off with the announcement and what that actual announcement means. What does it mean for us as um, Dynamics Power Platform people? Um, and then we're going to talk about the different experiences that we um, this covers um, and also what can we actually do? What about the new customer service journey? Because as we know, they, the, this will have an impact on, on that. So I want to basically go into to those three. Now, I did promise you a demo, but this is where my, my humanity comes into play because I was so excited about uh, a new preview um, of, of um, one of the newer releases coming up. And I was told I needed to reset my environment to get it and I reset it without an absolute thought which basically means that yeah that that demo has also been been wiped um and I only just realized it last night when I was you know prepping again everything and I was like yeah I should not have done that but it's done luckily though I do have a video so we're going to be using a video today um, for me to show you some of this stuff right and the rest which I don't have a video for we've got some screenshots and I'm happy to talk about them um, so let's start let's start about and let's start off by talking about the announcement so So let's start to put down, talk about the announcement. So at Inspire, Microsoft Inspire this year, there was one huge announcement, which was that any Microsoft Teams user can access Dynamics 365 at no additional cost. Now, this announcement came hand in hand with, I think, a few weeks before, I think it was like two weeks before, with the October release notes, where if you looked at them, you'd have seen that um, there were a lot of Teams collaboration experiences being introduced um, to be available in October. Um, so, of course, this, this has, uh, this led to a lot of questions. <clears throat> questions like, how will the security be be factored into dynamics? You know, are you addressing security or um, is this going to be for all business applications? And when is this actually going to be valid from? So what I'm going to do is I want to talk about um, answer some of these questions and show some of the journeys that this opens up. Right, um, because this is going to give access to a specific set of scenarios or some cut scenarios where a Teams user has access to a Teams member license privilege. All right, so let's have a look at some of those scenarios and examples. But first, let's talk about the considerations for this announcement and the implications of this announcement. 
So with this announcement, um, one of the questions was security. And what this is doing is this is going to give a Microsoft Teams um, user, someone with a Microsoft Teams license, Teams member access to Dynamics, right? Now, when I say a Microsoft Teams user, yes, you can have a guest user inside of Teams, right? So if you have like a, a third party manufacturer that you might have included as a guest access, so you can actually help to triage um, issues, it's important that um, we validate that first with Microsoft because this may not be eligible. This experience might not be eligible for guest users. Um, that is something that we're still waiting for a um, response on. Um, the, this is also initially limited to D365 sales and customer service applications. So although they've said, oh yeah, you know, Teams, all business applications, that is what they're aiming to do ultimately, but for the initial launch, the initial, um, uh, initial, how do you put this? The initial experiences that they're introducing, um, they are limited to sales and customer service. Um, this does not mean that you can't build your own, you can, but um, the specific scenarios that Microsoft are providing as part of the October release will only be for sales and customer service. And also, um, although they'll be able to read, uh, read data with Teams member access, of course, you can only edit your own data, but you're going to be allowed to edit data that's owned by other people in specific use cases. So for example, if we're talking about an opportunity where it might be owned by one of your colleagues, um, and we're all in a meeting, then you can see the data and someone who does not own the data can actually edit it in that set. So that is an example of one of the use cases where um, a, um, someone else might be able to edit, although you're not owning that, that record. Um, and that goes outside the scope of the team member license. So there, there's some instances where the team member license is kind of extended. Okay. Now, Another question was, what about what about Outlook? Um, what's the implication between Outlook? And it's we have to remember that Outlook is is really for more focused work. It's Outlook is not a collaboration tool, so it's really going to serve an entirely different purpose. Um, teams collaboration and Outlook collaboration will and will coexist um, because of the differences between them. Um, so Teams is, is more, of, of course, of a collaboration tool. You've got all your applications, um, the interaction with, um, with other users, um, phone calls, chats, etc., and which means that you can all work on the same record at the same time, seeing it as, as, as you do that, whereas, yeah, Outlook is, is more I'm seeing it and I'm going to do it by myself. It's, it's, it's like a Nintendo Switch versus a PS4, pretty much. Cool. Um, so yeah, they will coexist. And then of course, we also have to remember that integration between Teams and D365 already existed. So some might be wondering, but you know, it's already existed. Why the big fuss? It's nothing new. Um, the integration that we had before was great, right? Um, it's perfect for back office in, in the situation where you might have a, say, someone calls up, um, say, you know, you might make an application for, for a credit card or, an, um, or a mortgage, and you, you call the contact center to check on that status. Now, if that contact center agent has access to the underwriting team or a team that is making the decision, they could actually interact with that team um, to, to ask them um, what, what the status is. To do that though, they would have to go outside of the dynamic solution, go inside of Teams and ask that question. Now that user would then be able to bring up the record inside of the Teams experience, inside of Dynamics, right? Um, so there is a, there's a cut there. It's not as fluid as you might want it to be. But of course, with, the, um, with Power Automate, you can always create an adaptive card, but it's the adaptive card is not, um, it's more of a notification that you can ignore pretty much. It's, it's not going to, um, it's gonna give you a notification, but it's not going to be as fluid 
as um, you might like. Because it's if you're waiting on a response, it's not going to push that person to respond to you. But what it would do is it would allow them to open the exact um, case that um, you're talking about and respond to the case so everything is in the same record, which is which is great. So what I'm trying to say is basically the experience of the dynamics and the embedded teams, so the embedded dynamics experience in teams, it was great, it's perfect for back office, but it still required, um, it, you still, it still had some gaps in terms of the, the process and um, how it could interact between back office and agents or customer service staff. Another thing as well is it was cost prohibitive because if the underwriting team or whoever needed to access that record, they would at least need to purchase a team member license, which of course can become um, quite expensive depending on the amount of users that you have. So a lot of the times what would happen is we would find other solutions um, or workarounds in order to kind of get this experience um, for, for us to get the underwriting team to, to support the customer service team. There would be other, other alternatives suggested. And this is where I think the, 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 type, the collaboration experience is really going to come into play. Now, the next slides, um, a few of the next slides actually took from the Inspire announcement. So you might notice that they are quite similar. If you didn't, then that's fine. They're new to you and, you know, it's great. Um, but pretty much here, what you see is <laughs> like almost playing a game of Chinese whisper, where you've got a sales rep that is working to a sales rep that's working to create like a proposal or a bid for his opportunity. And there are many people involved in, 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 cre in the creation and the, the development of the leads of the opportunity or the proposal. You've got the business manager that is working on uh, making sure that everything is put together properly, that the account is being um, ran as it should. You've got the marketing um, person that is basically looking at the campaigns um, and saying, okay, is this person, is this account that the sales leader is responsible for or working on or the opportunity that they're working on related to a campaign that is being ran, operations and the product lead, right? They're all interacting in different ways through messages, through phone calls, through, through, through chats. Um, and because of this, it's not like everything is in the one place because if you have chat conversations, those chat conversations are not stored in Dynamics. Neither are the phone call conversations. So you really don't know what is going on with your own account. Um, and this is where the whole thing with Teams comes in because with Teams, it brings it all together where the sales rep, the business lead, the marketing operations product, they're not all working on the same record at the same time. So if we look at the experience that we had before, where I said, oh yeah, we already had a Dynamics um, into, um, integration inside of Teams. Remember, they needed a license. It was cost prohibitive. So a lot of people just never did it. Now we don't need that license anymore, which basically means that yes, they can access this data. So you can now embed the application. And there were two ways of embedding the um, embedding teams instead of dynamics. And this is something that's already available. It's not, it's not new. This is already there and available today, where you can embed the application, the whole dynamics application inside of teams, just as long as it's not a multi-session experience and it is um, UI, unified um, interface ready. So that's like your customer service hub, your sales hub, you can embed those and um, you can actually work from within Teams, but use Dynamics. You can also embed records inside of channels. Um, so if I'm working on an opportunity or a case um, per se, I can actually pin that case or the opportunity inside of the channel and everyone can contribute to it. So it just makes it so much easier. So imagine the business manager knowing that there's stuff that's happening what they're going to be doing is they're going to be updating the record inside of teams, the marketing, the operations, the product lead. OK, um, the other thing as well is I'll show you one of the scenarios where this is really going to become 
quite applicable where you, they're on a meeting and they're going to be able to make the notes and all the notes are coming straight back into Teams. So remember I talked about phone call records don't come into to D365 and um, chat records don't come into D365. Well, um, there will be other implications, which means that you will actually see what is going on with that record. What this basically means is that there's time saved Right. This leads to the cost of sale for a salesperson being reduced and a lot more productivity and really has an impact on the workers. We can actually look at the same experience that we talked about of the salesperson to the customer service um, point of view as well. Um, so if you want to resolve a case, of course, you'd have to go to everyone um, because you might not know what the, the actual resolution is. Um, the customer might be on hold. This basically means the agent could tend um, could get frustrated um, because they have to go to different people for a resolution who may even internally pass the buck, right? Um, and I can say that from experience as a previous call center agent um, where you, you do have to go to different people and you spend a lot of time trying to get the answer, um, but you're the one, you're the customer facing person. So the customer isn't happy because they've been put on hold for a long time and you have to take the, you have to take the hit, um, even though it's your internal team members that are kind of playing past the buck. Um, so the team's collaboration here, it really doesn't only impact the agent um, to provide more support for them, but it really helps with first time resolution rates as well, and also average handling times for a um, for the, the agent. And of course, means that the customer can get off the phone a lot quicker. So let's have a look at some of the scenarios and some of the examples. So the first example, the first scenario that I want to talk about is um, a functionality called message extensions. So what message, ex message extensions is really going to do, it's going to allow um, SMEs and other Teams users to search for data directly within Teams um, and then access that data to allow them to collaborate directly within Teams. So imagine if I'm, a, let's say I'm a contact center person and I want to draw everybody's attention to a particular case where um, I'm trying to give an example. Maybe there's a new product launch and I'm noticing a trend and um, I want to give an example of one of the cases involved in this trend or the parent case, um, so to speak. I can basically um, do a search. And if you're familiar with Azure DevOps, Azure DevOps has this example as well where I can um, add or show a work item directly within Teams and draw everybody's attention to it. And it's pretty much the same thing. And I find it really, really cool because it shows that it's the same experience irrespective of the application being used. Um, they're, they're all very similar within Teams. So you search for um, the record inside of Dynamics. Um, and you can see from the screenshot, you can actually do opportunities, accounts, leads, and contacts. Um, you will be able to do um, two additional ones. So you see the little three drop downs. Um, you'll, you'll have um, a max of, I think it was six. Um, so you'll, there'll be two additional ones, um, one being cases. Um, so you'll click on cases and um, you'll be able to search for your case and um, then make a comment as to why you're, you know, talking about this case. And and, and press enter. So what this will then do is allow you to see a, a summary, a brief summary of what the of what the, the opportunity or the case is related to. OK, um, so as I mentioned, it's really limited at the moment to just sales and customer service, but it's going to be eventually applicable for all the Dynamics business applications. So once I've actually pressed enter, what you'll see here, and I'm sorry I'm sharing screenshots. I, I did not mean to reset my environment. I'm very sorry about that, um, but I'll show the screenshots um, and hopefully you'll kind of get what I'm what I'm trying to say. So basically, you can see here that I basically put a comment and you will see the um, the preview of the record that's actually shown here. Now, at the moment, this um, this record is in the preview. Anyhow, it's not um, editable, um, so the, the form is not customizable, um, but I believe that that ultimately will will change and it will be customizable in the future. Um, so for now, it's not customizable, but hopefully it will be once it goes to GA. Um, so 
this really is useful because as you can see, I, um, everyone in this team can actually now see what, the, what I'm talking about and refer to this record. So if I click on view details, I can actually drill into the record, see additional information, go to the activity tab to add a note, um, add a task, or actually see the list of activities um, and basically update it as I need to. So if I, if, I, if I have applicable information, I can just basically add a note from within this, even if I don't have you know, a Dynamics user license, I can still add my inputs to this record and that, rec that will actually be seen by everyone that has access to this record as well. And of course, because we have to factor in security, when we're factoring, when we're factoring in security, um, if you don't have access to a particular group of records, I might not be in the right business unit, you're not going to see these records. So um, we don't have to worry about the security, you just have to set them up just like you would set up any other normal user. Okay. Um, so that is actually one of the, the ways in which um, the experience is going to be applicable. Um, message extensions where I can now search for records directly within Teams and put them into the actual Teams channel or the, um, the chat area um, to allow people to interact with that record. And this has to be triggered by um, someone with um, Dynamics, um, with a Dynamics license. Um, but it can be interacted with by anyone that does not have a Dynamics license. Um, but that person will be able to add their notes, um, you know, update a task or review the activities. So I think that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, the, the next experience that um, they'll be able to do is when a call is made. So, of course, what we're going to be able to do is uh, um, reference a record, a, a Dynamics record, um, on a Teams call. And when that, that record is, is referenced, what I can then do is I can, um, when I'm in the call, see information related to that, um, that record. So for example, this opportunity has been referenced, so I can see the estimated close dates, the contacts that are involved in this um, opportunity, and of course, sales insights information and activities. Whilst I'm in the call, I can actually make updates to the record. So I can um, update the, uh, the notes, I can um, update the tasks. So for example, if you're in a bid manager situation, um, what, um, what typically happens for really large deals, you might have a, a, a large group of people working on that bid, that opportunity with you, and you want to make sure that everything is being tracked as necessary, that you've got all the access. You can move away from the spreadsheet and you can actually come into um, Dynamics and actually create everything as a task and keep everything updated. So everyone, not only the bid team, but maybe your um, your managers and everyone else will also know what's going on with this opportunity. So I think that's really useful um, because it just removes the um, it increases the transparency of what's actually happening in the business, and means that you don't you as a bid manager or opportunity person does not have to answer as many questions as you typically would have to. So it's really cool. Um, and you also notice the transcript, and that's because what's actually being said in the meeting can also be saved against the, the Dynamics record as well. So that's really cool. Now, the next one's going to be a video, and the next one is something that's more applicable um, to what's coming in, um, I think, October this year, especially for a contact center. And I'm super excited about it. Um, so I'm going to share, um, start this video now. Uh, but before I start the video, let me set the scene for this. Um, so typically, as I mentioned at the start, um, if you're working in a back office, um, working with a, a contact center, um, and you have like back office departments, as an agent, you or a customer service person, um, you will have to go outside of Teams in order to initiate a conversation with that back office person for them to you know, know that you need their assistance or do something for you for that particular record. But what if you can actually start that conversation directly within the, the case record so you're not moving away from the, the customer? you know, and moving away from the context of what you're talking about. Well, that's where the linked conversations will come into play. So the linked conversations, it was very, very um, visible in the October release waves notes. Um, and um, yeah, so that's also going to be for sales and service. 
but also when I say sales and service, I mean specifically customer service hub. It is not compatible at this moment with customer service workspace or omni-channel, but I really hope that they're planning to do that and make that um, updated for, for the October release um, because I really would find that useful. So let me share my, um, let me start the video and then let's um, go through what's happening right now. So you'll notice that there is a new icon here in the customer service hub. And that basically, that icon is the Teams collaboration icon. This will allow me to initiate a new chat. Now there are two ways in which I can initiate a new chat. Let me pause this. Um, you can initiate a new linked chat or you can initiate um, just a normal conversation. Say you want to talk to your friend, but you're actually working on this, um, this case. You can still initiate the chat. It just means that that come that friendly conversation, hey, are you going out later today? That will not be saved against the case. So it's quite similar if you remember in the days of Outlook integration where we were told you got to be careful of what you track, you know, because if you do you have a tracking ID, it's going to be tracked against the records. So if you start with personal uh, personal information, it's going to be saved against the case record. Well, that does not exist here because you choose how and when that chat is linked to the, the case. So if you want the chat to be linked to a case, you click on new linked case. And if you don't want the chat to be linked to the case, you just start a new chat, um, you know, by clicking on the button, right? Any chats that you have um, within Teams itself will also appear in your recent chat. So you can start a chat outside of Teams. It will be shown here. You can carry on that, um, that chat conversation here as well. So if I click on new link chat, what you'll notice is that the, the name of the case will pre-populate in the chat title, right? It will also look for everyone that I have um, access to in my, um, so you'll see the chat name here, which is the, the name of the case. You'll, I'll also be able to search for um, anyone that I would be able to just like in normal in Teams. And what I'll also be able to do if I needed to is add additional people to the chat as well. Right. Um, so this is really useful. So, for example, there's a concept in customer service called swarming. If you needed a group of people to um, work on a an up, um, work on a case with you, um, all all really good at specific different areas. So, say you have an, an application that has components of Power Virtual Agent, components of Power Apps. You're not sure where this this application is falling down. You're not going to just have the power app person on the on the on the line. You're going to have the power virtual agent specialist there too. This is going to allow you to bring everybody that you need for that case into this conversation, and that is going to then be. Um, they're going to also then see the the case as well, so they can then interact with you, see what the um, what you're talking about, and um, resolve it a lot quicker. And this is why I want it to be course on the on the um, omni-channel side of things because this will reduce call handling time and, and really increase first time resol resolution by quite a lot um, because I'm going to now be getting the help that I need as I'm on the call which is quite perfect right now let me carry on with the video I can create multiple link chats as well so if I wanted a new link chat, I can, but I can also change the name of the link chat. Okay, and then um, there I can see the recent chats. Now, if there was a chat that I wanted to initiate, um, that I was already talking to the person, as you saw, I can initiate a link chat from there as well. But what it means is that the previous history um, is not carried across. So you saw that it didn't carry that previous history of what we were talking about across. So don't worry, your secrets are safe. Um, it's not going to carry across what you were talking about. It's just going to start from the time that you started that chat. And anytime anybody else, so say I started the conversation and I linked the chat and I had um, an interaction with um, the support agents, um, and I told the customer to go away and do something. Now the customer might, might be calling back. Well, the beauty about it is the next person that takes that call will be able to see the linked chat, 
see the history of what was said, see what I actually asked the, um, the agent to do or the customer to do, and see what the experts advised and carry on with the conversation with the same agents. So it's really good for continuation. I don't need to um, go and find them all again. As an agent, it just saves a lot of time. Okay. Um, so here, pretty much, you're, you're just seeing the ability to, to link a lot of pieces um, to the, the chats and also see the previous chat records that I've had from, from before. So um, the agents on the other side, so um, for example, Cameron Williamson, if I initiate the new link chat with him, would be able to see the record, would be able to interact with the record and support me as I needed to, and he would not need a license. Okay, so um, let me look. I think that is it for me. Those are the three experiences um, that are going to be now available from um, the the new the, the session that was talked about at Inspire. All of this actually is available out and about. It's public information. Um, you'll be able to find um, additional information on the Inspire videos and also on my blog. Um, so if you've got any additional questions, I'm happy to take that now. Um, otherwise. Thank you very much, Tricia. Excellent. That was really, really insightful and uh, uh, still a great presentation. Um, there are, are there any questions, everyone? Uh, you've got a few minutes to post your questions. Right, so uh, whilst we wait and give people a chance, some great feedback there for your session. Um, you can also meet Tr Trisha again. She's got some new goodies to share at the Customer Self-Service Bootcamp. Uh, that's next month. So Trisha will be sharing some good tips on customer service at next month's Customer Self-Service Bootcamp. So Trisha, I just want to thank you for taking your time out today uh, to be able to deliver this. Uh, so once again, thank you. Do you have any uh, final comments or any announcements to make? Yeah, so obviously this is coming out in October. Um, if you are absolutely interested in, um, you know, talking a bit further about it, please, you know, literally drop me. If you've got any questions <clears throat> or anything that I haven't actually mentioned here, um, drop me a note as well, because I'm deeply looking into this for, um, for October. Um, and I personally am quite keen on this experience because I see um, the, the closing a loop pretty much. Um, we talk about productivity um, and productivity doesn't come without ensuring that everyone in a, in a company can easily collaborate. And I feel that this is what Microsoft are really now pushing for. And I, I really applaud them for that. So yeah, just two things. Drop me a note if you've got any questions or any um, insights that you have. Um, also, check out my blog, connect with me on Twitter and just yeah, general interact with me. Thank you, Tricia. Um, are you able to share your blog and your contact information in the chat? Yes, I will. Fantastic. Excellent. Great stuff, guys. That was Tricia. Um, so um, our next session will be Abhishek. So Abhishek's session is scheduled um, in the next half an hour. However, we may be able to get started a bit earlier. Um, Abhishek, are you there? Yeah, I was.